Namaste, thank you for being here as we explore today's topic which is veganism and awakening to create a happier, greener planet. So I'm just looking at the connection of uh, eating a plant-based diet and the conscious planetary awakening that's happening at this time because we are in very uh, disconcerting times with what's going on in the world right now with nature and the environment and there has been an increasingly uh, um, interest in in going vegan but also there is at the same time that this ecological change is going on in the climate and at the same time there's an increased interest in spirituality and people are also wakening up to their higher intelligence within and they are you know wanting greater freedom as well to just be their most authentic expression so really what we're looking at is how veganism and planetary consciousness awakening kind of work together and how they can create a more sustainable happier greener planet so veganism in itself reconnects us helps to reconnect us to nature it is our nature there's we're not separate from nature we come from nature basically and the the infinite intelligence that is is expressing itself through us is also expressing itself through a variety of forms on this planet but infinite intelligence itself doesn't discriminate you know between all these different forms otherwise we wouldn't all be here so this planet and its um, intrinsic ecosystem is here for all of us to thrive um, there is a book somewhere called Inherent Thriving or a Theory by uh, G.W. Harkin and it's based on the fact that all, all living beings on this planet are supposed to be thriving and the planet herself is uh, a thriving, is made for thriving. It's taken millions and billions of years for the evolution to have occurred that has created this planet as it is today, as we know it as it is today. So what's happened, what's, what's, <laughs> what's disconcerting is the alarming rate that, you know, our behavior on this planet and our increasing population is affecting the um, ecosystem and the, um, the lifestyle of other animals and living beings. So clearly, change has to happen on the human level in order to bring back balance so that there is more harmonious balance between all the species on this planet. Well, I mean there is harmony between all the other species but it's between the human species and all the other species that has to be brought back into balance somehow. So my experiences of awakening and unity consciousness happened probably well in my early 20s but later on in life when after I'd been vegan for about four years I had um, incredible experiences of unity consciousness with the animals around me with nature with my pets and and these experiences really really opened me up opened my heart up first of all because it was like um, the, the natural unity that I felt with the other living beings. I recognized that the source of existence was within me and also within them and that there was no separation. There is just infinite unity expressing itself in the different forms. And so I had this awakening which transformed my life in many ways and, and also confirmed for me and consolidated the reasons for being vegan which hadn't originally been about, um, hadn't originally really been about the animals. I mean, I did go vegetarian when I was 16, which was, I guess, an early start. And that, that was more of a, um, a choice about the animals. But veganism wasn't really until much later on. And, and once I had this awakening with the, the connection with the animals around me, after being vegan for four years, it just consolidated and confirmed for me that, um, you know, 
the appreciation of this infinite intelligence in form um, within all of life was to me um, a crucial point and a turnaround and, and made it essential for me to carry on being vegan. So bigger picture reasons obviously in these, these times are to do with the climate and the ecological change that we're going through. And you know the scientists are all backing it up. All the environmentalists are coming out and saying the same thing, that you know we have to really turn our attention back to nature, because the I guess the concern is that that we are we can get so easily distracted as humans mentally um, through technology, through our iPhones, through the latest gadgets and the technologies that have been coming out in the last few years and that this can be a huge distraction to the, the, the human self, you know, that gets pulled into these, um, the stimulation of constant, constant mind stuff. And this can create that, you know, um, that move away from, from nature. But then the COVID thing happened and basically a lot of the the distractions in the world were, were sort of taken away from us and we we had no choice but to turn to nature in a, in a sense we needed her we needed to kind of um, connect with her so that we could heal and and you know not feel so alone for many of us as well that didn't have family so connecting with nature was very very nurturing and important around that time and we also see that uh, during that time when the world kind of went to sleep that a lot of the cities and things like that the wildlife started coming out and started you know um, coming coming into our world in a sense because because there was a peace there was a peacefulness created that allowed the environment that allowed the space for nature to actually come and be in the cities and the towns because the humans were all being quiet and it was an important time in humanity uh, humanity's evolution to just slow down and realize that you know we don't have to be on this you know cog wheel of constant constant stimulation and many people have taken that time to self-reflect and find out what's real and true in their lives what is most authentic to them and what's most important to them especially. So the other reasons for being vegan as well are just that it reduces suffering on this planet and we can ask ourselves as conscious awakening individuals do we want to to be ingesting um, animals that have had to suffer in order for us to eat. We don't need to eat, we're not in survival mode um, <laughs> hearing fell out. We're not in survival mode. Um, our ancestors were, but we're not in survival mode. We can walk into a supermarket today and just as easily make a vegan meal with rice, peas, beans, lentils, and veg vegetables. But what's really important is we keep that sustainability of the food supply because as the population increases, then obviously the food supply, the food, the demand for food goes up. And it's important that we create a sustainable model that we can feed ourselves and also probably address, you know, the, um, the numbers, the increasing population as well. And maybe, you know, consider not having as many babies and things like that. Um, but I, I don't, I'm not an expert on that part. So, but in terms of reducing suffering on the planet, it's a very good reason to go vegan because as, as, a spiritual person if you are ingesting animals that have suffered do you think that that's going to contribute to your peace to your well-being to your happiness so veganism is a way of I guess having a clearer conscience in that sense um, of knowing that you're not contributing to an animal suffering but also that you are um, it's going to create more peace within you, more peaceful um, state of mind and, and being because you're not in, in, 
ingesting the suffering and the hormones and all the rest of it that goes into the animals. So in the eyes of consciousness, we can ask, well, how does consciousness see creation? You know, the creation that was created out of this infinite intelligence. And, you know, all, all forms are valid. All creations are valid. So, you know, uh, an ant is just imp as important as a spider and, you know, a dog is as important as a horse or a cow or a calf. And it's like, you know, why, why do we assume that as humans, because we happen to be incarnated in this lifetime as a human, you know, why do we assume that that's supposed to mean that somehow we have greater privileges on this, on this planet? Um, so, you know, compared to, to other animals, it's still the one life, it's still the one infinite intelligence expressing itself in the form of a cow. It's, it's just chosen to experience itself as a cow in this, in this particular formation, the same way that, you know, infinite intelligence is in you or in me expressing as, as whatever, you know, this individual or we, we assume to be individual um, expression. So there's no doubt that veganism in these times is a big step in creating sustainability for increasing for the increasing population on earth the humans are not going to slow down in their um, uh, increasing their population so we have to find the models that are going to support um, housing and food in a sustainable way that doesn't involve cruelty and, and the suffering of animals and I just want to um, read you this from this 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 uh, this month's big issue um, which I got the other day is focused particularly on the environment and it has an interview with Chris Packham and Brian Cox uh, the uh, scientist and it's very very good and very um, informative so I just wanted to read um, just a couple of bits that I um, highlighted so Chris Packham says, if we accept your informed guess, then we have an ethical responsibility because of that meaning or consciousness to look after life, not just our own, but life itself, because it's unbelievably precious and unique. So this was after um, they were discussing the meaning of life. Um, Brian Cox says, a lifeless universe is a meaningless universe. A lifeless planet is a meaningless planet. But that means if this planet is currently the only one with multicellular life and consciousness and a civilization, I would say it's the only planet where meaning exists in the galaxy and we have a responsibility to protect it. So that was what Chris Packham was referring to. So we have an ethical responsibility because of consciousness um, expressing itself through life. So we have this ethical responsibility to take care of life because it's so precious because this planet this planet earth is so precious and we don't know that there is any other planet like it in in the universe so so that makes it unbelievably unbelievably precious and unique and that means that all the different life forms that many of us you know take for granted because we're just used to that now but actually every single life on this planet is is absolutely unique and amazing in its, you know, in its manifestation. So um, Brian Cox refers that yes is the answer. So even if you're the sort of person who only cares about humanity, you're forced to care about the ecosystem on which humanity rests. The oxygen we breathe comes from the plants. The plants are at the base of the food system. So if you get rid of all the plants, you get rid of all the food. The interconnectedness of our ecosystem is such that even if, if, even if it's the, just the consci consciousness that you care about, you really have to pay attention to the rest. You really do have to pay attention to the rest. So basically, it's coming back to that connection between consciousness and um, you know, making informed choices, making intelligent choices that are related to the appreciation of the manifestation of life on this planet. 
appreciating the consciousness that's coming through it's expressing itself in each individual form on this planet across all the species not one species is is more um, is more precious than the other basically all life is precious so all life is precious on this planet and we have a duty to protect it and at least not destroy it so at the moment you know we have to figure out a way how we can create an ecosystem where all life forms thrive and it's mankind that's caused the biggest destruction so far so it's up to us to fix where we've gone wrong it's up to us to um, create that happier greener planet and I also believe that as we awaken to the you know the consciousness and the miracle of our own expression on this planet as well that that also has the knock-on effect of appreciating the life and intelligence life in all forms on this planet but you know even if we're not um, enlightened beings yet you know we can start to appreciate and respect the life and the consciousness that's expressing through all the other forms on this planet and make the changes necessary to um, create a sustainable greener planet for the future and especially for the future of our children and the future generations you know um, the bird population has been decreasing you know and I listen to the birds when I'm in my kitchen and it's like I want I want you know the person in 20 years time to be standing in that kitchen to still be able to hear those garden birds so it really is important that we make significant changes at this time and I do believe that one of the you know one of the most profound changes that we can make is to go plant-based and to choose to be vegan at this time so thank you very much for listening I really appreciate you being here and um, take good care and uh, look after yourselves look after each other look after the planet look after the animals thank you I love you